in five, four, three, two, one. Hola, hippies. Paz nuestro barrio. From high atop the anti-corporate soapbox nestled comfortably amid the shrubbery enshrouded and flower bedecked wonders of the botanical garden which is the centerpiece of worldwide hippies national headquarters somewhere in upstate New York. I am John Konopak, citizen journalist from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I want to address the goddamned government. I mean literally. Prediction. Willard R. Money's weird religion is going to work against him in the election this fall. And heretical though this may sound, in my humble opinion, it damn well should, too. I, for one, do not think that if someone has publicly avowed religious, religious beliefs, it is wrong or improper to hold those against them, quote-unquote, in a political context, that is to say, to interrogate them about the possible consequences of those beliefs in their public practice, if they are running for any public office from which they'll exercise, say, political power or dispense justice or create policy applicable to the general population, not just to their confessions, and two, those convictions have been evidently loony and irrational and or could exclude or discriminate against non-cult members. It's not just the Mormons against whom I object. I think anyone who so much as mentions faith or belief in gods or other mythic creatures as among their qualifications for office is prima facie unqualified to lead and should automatically be disqualified from attempting to take over a sane, reality-based, secular state. Further, as the matter is on the table, I strongly object to nominating, much less of electing, a member of the Mormon or any clerical hierarchy to positions of secular authority. Just on the face of it, it's wrong. You, you wouldn't vote for some Catholic cardinal to be the country's president, now would you? No, you know you wouldn't, because you'd justifiably be dubious of their loyalties, Washington or Rome. Any candidate for office in the secular state who even implies that their first responsibility to the, or their highest loyalty is to some amorphous, evanescent, imaginary God-being, should be seen to have disqualified themselves from our consideration. It's a clear conflict of interest. It's God or country. They're not remotely related. Now, I know in the bad old days, JFK got crap for being a Catholic. Al Smith, too. They were merely members of the Catholic laity, however. They were baptized and confessed and confirmed, but they never held positions in the church hierarchy other than altar boys, maybe. They were never intimates at the Vatican the way that our money is an initiate in the mysteries of Moroni and the Sanctum Santorum. Yeah, that's what I said. In Salt Lake City. So how is it that Bishop Elder R. Money gets a free pass on the matter of his power and position in his so-called church? Let's remember, and I dare say, unlike sexuality, religion is a choice. People are all born non-believers. They choose to be Catholic or Mormons or Jain or whatever. They learn their superstitions. Later, perhaps, they ratify or abandon them, but they have chosen. If you choose to believe in a returning, immortal, crucified Redeemer, or in a shiny blue sparkle pony which descends from heaven to escort the saints to their eternal home in the clouds, or that your prophet read the words of an angel named Moroni which were inscribed on the golden dinner plates from the planet Kolob. That's a conscious choice. Nobody forces anybody to believe any of that. So, unless all the religions in the world have been lying ever since they started, and their faith does not, in fact, have any impact on their behavior or conduct in the public sphere, if then what they say about their faith won't influence their decisions, why do they mention it? And if it will, well, I think they've got ulterior motives, so why vote for them? A note here, that the ancient Hebrew authors of the Abrahamic texts uh, place Yahweh's home in heaven is not a significant variation upon the theme of putting that home on the planet Kolob. 
it signifies only really, I think, that the ancient Hebrews didn't have a word for planet. So to summarize, to me, the point is that if upon reflection and confronted with contrary facts, someone who seeks to exercise national executive power refuses to admit that they are at least influenced by delusional superstitions, which are in many cases too stupid to repeat in public, this militates heavily against their competence to lead anything other than a fucking Sunday school choir, much less the still most powerful nation on the planet. Or is that just me, hippies? I don't know. You tell me. See you at the beach.